was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my tomb Till I met you
I just thought, you know what, I'm going to get my phone out for a moment and I'm just going to see what does breakthrough really mean. We're all sitting here singing about it, but do you know what it means? So here it is, a military movement or advance all the way through and beyond an enemy's frontline defense. An act or instance of removing or surpassing an obstruction or restriction, the overcoming of a stalemate. Any significant or sudden advance development, achievement or increase as in scientific knowledge or diplomacy that removes a barrier to progress. Why are you settling for just getting healed? Why would you just settle for cancer to be gone? Why would you settle just for your deaf ear to be open? Why would you just settle, save my son who's bound in this sin I can't explain and I just, it makes me feel bad. Why would I just settle in just having a good service? He said, I not only want to do that, but I want you to know that my mind for you is to go beyond what he did, make him pay for what he did, take back more than he ever did, go beyond what you're asking for. So I'm just going to tell you something. I'm not just here to see people saved, because some of you are going to come to Jesus. I'm not just here for those of you watching online just to have a feel good and say, ooh, wasn't that good. That's not what my, that's not what it is for me. It's not even just to have a crowd. It is beyond this that I believe God is not just going to touch you, but he is going to do so something so powerful 
that He's going to use you to take back more than the enemy took in the first place. He's going to give you back more joy, more health, more prosperity, more blessing. Don't just settle for being here. Break through, friends. Break through. Break through. So look, if that's how God is and that's what He wants to do, break through, there's a stalemate. Stop something, stop and progress in your life. What is it? What's a stalemate? How long are we going to keep on doing this? How long are we going to keep on settling for this? Let's have a breakthrough. So if that's what God says, I'm going to go beyond. I got another thing for you. So I'm going to go beyond the normal kind of praise I give. I'm going to go beyond my normal level of commitment to Jesus than what I'm living in right now in this moment. I'm going to go beyond. If he's going beyond, I want to go beyond it. I want to go further, deeper, louder, happier, joyful. So I tell you what, I know you praise real good. But when we sang breakthrough, I want you to give a breakthrough praise for what you need right now, that he's not just going to intervene for you. He's going to take you further than you ever, ever dreamed. Come on, just give him a breakthrough praise. Come on, right at home. Get up out of your sofa. Begin to praise God. Hop out of that bed. Start praising God for the healing, for the blessing, the miracles, the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Revival is in the land, friends. Jesus is here. His presence is here to save, heal, and deliver. Woo! My, my, my. Come on, those of you at home and those of you in the house, look at your neighbor and say, you better just get ready for where God's taking you. You're going beyond. Tell him you're going beyond what God expected. Oh, you can be seated in the house of God. How many are glad to be in the house of God today? Amen. Oh, I'm so glad you're here, church family, online. So glad to see you all. It is an incredible morning today. It is. It is. Lord is good. What a powerful way to start today, breaking through. Thank you, worship team and all the, 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 the band. Wait, wait, where's, my, where's the worship team? We got to say, good, we have to say goodbye to somebody today, and I hate this. I hate this. Christine McCarthy, she's been serving on the worship team for over four years. And she has one of our, she's somebody I can really look up to. And um, I just love her. I, you know how I wore my heels because I knew I was doing this today. So Christine has been so faithful and so loyal. She she's has. one of our Calvin graduates and she's moving to California to work is that right so how how many of y'all thank you thank christine for for her faithfulness Amen, for christine y'all be praying for her that's Amen. that's talk about a culture shock going from yeah. michigan to, so i just looked back and looked at something you probably need to talk about the elephant in the room the big bright new elephant in the room have you all noticed that the two screens... I'm not screens, talking about me. You, <laughs> have you all noticed that the two screens are a little bit more vivid and a whole lot more clear? Yes. That's because what was in the center now has been expanded to the side screens. So now you can really look at Pastor Sam really close yes. and high depth. I see, Amen. I, see, I don't have a hole in my hair No today. hole in hair? Yeah. This, I, I need to take one of these home. So I can do my hair. Yes, you need one of those. Yes, I do with my mirrors. I heard you last now, week. Now this one here, I mean, you cannot hide any flaws. Look at that gray in my yeah. head. It's very distinguished. Hide. Yes, it is. Makes him easily distinguished between the younger men. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that as a joke somewhere. And I'm, I'm proud of it. I love every gray hair you have. You know why? Because you earned everyone. Yeah, you're you. not a kid, and I tell you that right now. And I love you. I love you. I'm just glad you can't see mine. But I just want to say hats off. You know, Pastor Drew, and I know Corden Tuttle, and Dan, and all these guys. These, there's so many tech people. I want to miss them. I, I don't know if even Tommy and those guys from Facility, all of them. This is just wonderful, and they worked so hard on this. And I think you ought. They want to make the experience here is that the of Marriott? everything we do just so blessed. So let's just. Amen. Let's thank them. Amen. That's Look, just a great it's job. It's the Blue Bridge and the Marriott. Oh, it's the Blue Look Bridge and the Marriott. That's downtown Grand Rapids. Wow. I'm telling you, that is so cool. Maybe thank you, guys. Maybe one day we'll get our house up there. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Want, oh, you would not want to marry me. No, no. Just the Blue Bridge is fine. Yeah. Amen. You'd have to cut the grass every week. I uh, know. I don't like doing that. Amen. 
You know, friends, we announced last week that we are starting something October 6th that I believe is going to be like a breath of fresh Holy Spirit wind into your sails. It's called Thrive starting every Wednesday night on October 6th. It's going to be such a unique experience. And if you're desiring a greater worship and a deeper knowledge of the Word, and I'm just telling you, we just really felt in leadership that we were to have another time we can experience the presence of God, but even go deeper into the teaching of the Word of God. Sunday's an on-ramp so much, but we want to go deeper into things. And uh, we're going to be starting on October 6th. It's going to be amazing right here in the worship center. All the other kids' ministries will continue on. But it is going to be an experience that you're truly going to enjoy. And you're going to hear more as we go through the month. And you'll be here not just from me, but other, other teachers, even guests of how we can just experience the power of God in a real way and face the challenges you're facing, even in this culture. I mean, thank God, God has an answer for every single thing. And this is gonna be a refreshing to us in the body. So I want you to be with us and get ready for it. And today, today is really a big day. Today is a big day, don't forget. How many of you are excited about Hero School? <laughs> Hero training is today, right after service today at the Life Center. Free lunch, first of all, there's a free lunch, so don't forget, you need to get right over there right away because we need to, we need to uh, get you fed and get you, um, get you trained so that you can learn how to take this new product, all these new products that we have from CityServe and take them out and evangelize our community. We're gonna romance this city. With what, with what we're getting from CityServe. So please come over. If you want to know how to do it, one-on-one, -on -one, you don't need to, it, you don't need a boldness. You just need love. You don't need all that courage. Everybody's going, I just can't do it. You just need some love. You can love your neighbor and you can see a need, find a need and fill it. And we're going to teach you how to look for that need. So be there right after today's service. I, uh, I know a lot of people signed up, but you can just walk in too if you want to. We, it's first come, first serve. So um, just be there. I'll give you my sandwich. So there's going to be, there'll be space available. So it's first come, first serve. Please. And friends, I'm just going to tell you something. You know, let me just refer back to this for a moment. This big screen what I discovered is, is, you know, you just think it's an image, but actually they're just little bitty, they're just little bitty lights, pin lights. What you're actually seeing is the pictures being made by over 8 million little bitty lights. If one little light just did it, you wouldn't get much of an image. But when you put all those 8 million lights together, you get such a vibrant image of what you want and every detail is noted. At some point in the body of Christ, we got to quit dependent on pastor and that other person who's so committed to giving, to doing. And if you really want the image of Jesus to be seen, learn how to become a hero today. And if you want the image to be seen, if you're, if you're sitting there and when you watch Fox News and you watch CNN and all you're doing is cussing and fussing and throwing things down, that's not going to change one thing. When you decide to change your world and say, I can find somebody's need around me and use one of these products from the pod. In fact, you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to see the new pod open up with all the products in it today. You'll be able to see it. A lot of the products. A lot of the products. Yeah. You're going to be able to see it. And so I want to encourage you today to be a hero so that the image of Jesus can be seen, not just in the city, but an entire region and a state by what we're doing. How many believe, folks, it's time people get a clear picture of Jesus instead of one little thing they can't discern very well? That's good preaching. Amen. Ushers, come forward. Let's take an offering. That was good. Amen. But, but that wasn't in my notes, but it's just been hitting me, just hitting me. The world needs to see that. Become a hero. Learn. It's really simple. It's going to be very short, about 45 minutes, and it's going to be an awesome time together. We'll have great, great fellowship today as well. And also today, listen, we have, this is new member Sunday. So if you want to become a member today of Grand Rapids First, and be you not just that little light off by alone, I know some of us are at home and stuff, but you need to be a part of a family. You may be in a different part of the country, and you say, Grand Rapids First is my home. I learn here. I worship here. I, I'm, I'm growing here. You need to be a part of the core and not just the crowd. 
to give yourself away, and that's by becoming a member in covenant relationship. And it starts today at 12 p.m. Just go to the app or right there on your computers at home. Just get right on it at 12 o'clock. It starts, and you can learn how do I become a part of the great picture of Jesus Christ and what my light does to make make it happen to show Jesus Christ. So today's going to be an awesome, awesome day. How many thank God God's using you and me in this church to reach a city and a world for Jesus? How many thank God for that? We're making a difference, folks. You are making a difference. You're making a difference. You're making a difference. You are. In fact, today I want to just let you know, so many of us have seen some things that have happened in, in, around the world, and we're going to be praying today specifically for our troops in Afghanistan tonight. We're gonna to be praying. I, I know you already have because Jesus followers would be doing that anyway for what's happening in Afghanistan. You'd be praying for things around the world, the persecuted church, you would always be praying for that if you're a Jesus follower. But uh, you've seen what has happened in, in, in Haiti and I just wanna let you know, church, uh, we just already started making some movements to help in Haiti. In fact, uh, we just helped Convoy of Hope with a significant gift uh, because of your kind of giving, we did a significant to help get items immediately there to the hurting areas in Haiti. In fact, some of you know Telly and Amanda Morissette, who were out of his church, called to be missionaries to go back to Haiti. And we just told them yesterday, they said, we have a shipping container full of medical supplies we need here, a big shipping container. And uh, we're trying to raise the money. We said, you don't need to go another step forward. We don't care how much it is. And we just said, the check's coming because this is the heart of our church. And so we took care of that shipping container with medical supplies they need right now, right now, right now. And uh, it was an urgent need they need now, and we'd have come to you to say help out, but we already know your heart, so we're going to get on it. Amen? And we're going to get on it. And so let me just say this, church. If you're a first-time attender here and you don't know Jesus Christ, you're watching for the first time, I'm going to tell you, you're our guest here today. We don't expect a thing out of you. But as Jesus followers, we know what he did for us. And then we look back at what he's done with us and we say, how can we do for others what he did for us? And so we don't sit here and pick apart and say, make sure you get your 10% in. We look at everything we have and he says, if he wants every dime of my bank account, he gets it. Because he owns everything we have. And I want to encourage you, church family, when you see what's happening, that we would make a commitment to bring City Server to help all the churches in this state of Michigan. Not just ours, anybody that wants to lift up Jesus. When we see a need that's happening and people are suffering, if we have the power to do it, we're going to do it. Because it's exactly why Jesus empowered us. We're going to take what we have and we're going to make it happen. And I want to encourage you. I know we already sent it, but I want to encourage you to be faithful in your giving today because you empower us to do the very things that I just told you about. And it just doesn't happen once. How many know it's ongoing all the time? We got a hundred missionaries every month waiting on us all the time. How many thank God we are faithful to answer what God has called us to do. We're gonna do it every single time, amen? I'm proud of you, church. Church family, believers, I'm proud of you. Keep it up, keep it up. Because you're always gonna hear me say, we are not running out of money, church. We are not broke. We're running out of time. Jesus is coming soon. How many are looking to that? Amen. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. He's coming soon. Today, as we get ready to give, I want to encourage you. You can do it on the app, and you can see all the ways to give up there. And I want to also encourage you that some of you drop your offering. Ushers will be with offering bags at the back, or there's boxes at the back. You can do that. But I want you to be faithful in the worship of your giving to the Lord Jesus Christ, because you are are making a huge difference, everybody. Everyone's making a huge difference in this place who says, God, tell me what to do. Amen. Tell me what to do. This morning as we pray over the offering, I'm going to ask God to bless you. Every one of you, those watching online, I'm going to ask God to bless you. But today, I know many of you just can't ignore what we're seeing happening. And I know last week we prayed for Afghanistan, but the dynamics have changed in a way even since last Sunday. It is so fluid right now, friends. So fluid. And my heart sometimes, I know just like you, you're sitting there, you're thinking as a dad, what if I was a dad living in Afghanistan and I'm hiding with my children, trying to hide my family because now maybe the folks I helped out or because of my following Jesus Christ, I'm now a target. I just think about that. And we get to sit on our back porch with our families today with our Diet Coke and 
and God's calling you and me to pray for the protection of those precious people that are innocent. And now we've watched as 13 of our soldiers have fallen. The protectors have now just lost their lives trying to protect people. And I want us to pray not just for the families of these soldiers, but to pray that God will protect the protectors who are trying to help people get out of there. They need to get out. And that God would do something for the believers there and even the innocent who may not know Jesus Christ, the precious Muslim people that are there that don't, don't, don't know Jesus yet, but they're just caught in the middle of all this. We need to ask God to move. And I know, church, if I know you, if you're a Jesus follower, you've been praying all week. When you see your kids and your family sitting in safety, you're going to lay down in a bed tonight and God just used to begin to pray, God, work a miracle. Send your ministering, warring angels to protect your people and to protect innocent people that the gospel might be heard. So could you join me today as we pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to do a mighty work today? Come on, let's pray together. Father, first of all, we want to thank you for the blessings of this nation. As flawed as we may see some things and flawed in our own personal lives, you have been so gracious and good to us. And I ask you, Father, right now that you would be, first of all, with the families that are weeping and crying as we've watched 13 of our troops fall in the line of duty to protect people. Father, there are demonic, evil powers of darkness that are out to do harm. Anytime you see terror, death, there's only one person I assign to it for Satan comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And in the mix of all of it, Father, it would get our eyes off as believers of who the real culprit is getting behind people, inspiring people to do wicked and evil. Father, I ask you, just like Michael came to help Daniel when the Prince of Persia was over that territory and he fasted and he prayed, so the body of Christ says, Father, send your ministering, warring angels. One angel that took care of 185,000 of enemies and wiped them out, God. Would you defend your people over there and protect them, Jesus? I pray, Father, for the church that is there, the, the bride that is there, our brothers and sisters that are there, Jesus. Protect them, Father. Give them wisdom. Give them discernment. Father, I pray, would you do supernatural things that even the enemies would see the supernatural things happen. And they would say, there's something to this. That they would begin to even question, Father, their own hostility, their own anger. That they would question and open their eyes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Save the people, Father. And God, I pray that you would protect our protectors, our soldiers, God. I ask that you would defend them and give them discernment, God, and help them to extract, God, the people out of their Father who will be in harm, Lord Jesus. I ask for that. Would you help, help our military, God? Give them wisdom and give them divine protection. And I pray for the comfort and the peace of the husbands, the wives, the parents, the family members, Jesus, who are weeping. God, would you send the body of Christ with arms wrapped around them, God? giving them comfort and peace. And Father, I thank you for this group of men and women in front of me today as we get ready, Father, as we are the spiritual army of the Lord, standing in the gap, winning the loss, God. And Father, even empowering the message of Jesus Christ through the worship of our giving. Father, I pray a sweeping blessing of God would come across every single giver and worshiper of the living God in this room and watching online. I pray you invade this place with supernatural signs and wonders today, God. Send not only your Holy Spirit, because I can feel him here, but send your warring angels into this place to defend your people in here, God. And as we worship you, we know your presence is going to come down in a powerful way. And everybody who believes that, say amen and give him the highest praise. He is our God. He is our victory. He's our conquering King of kings and Lord of lords. I know you're ready to worship him, church. Come on, would you stand with us for a moment in the balconies, in the galleries, at home? Come on, just stand up from where you are. Get up out of that bed. Come on, get up off that couch. Push away from the breakfast table. Come on, let's begin to lift our hands and say, Holy Spirit, fill this place. 
fill this place. Jesus, as your anointing comes in, your presence comes in for healing, for salvation. But let us know you, Jesus, as we lift your name. Come on, let's praise him and glorify him today.
suddenly articulate with a thousand touches to lift one cry then from north to south and east to west with you Christ be magnified From sea and sky, from rivers to the mountain tops, we'd hear Christ be magnified. Come on, with one voice, declare. in most melody and every human heart it's there to cry then in one in raptured hell of praise we'll sing Christ be magnified Christ be magnified hey, would you say Would you say, no, I won't bow to idols. I'll stand strong and worship you. And if it puts me in the fire, I'll rejoice because you're there too. No, I won't be formed by feelings. I'll hold fast to what is true. And if the cross brings transformation, I'll be crucified with you. Because death is just a doorway into resurrection life And if I join you in your suffering Then I'll join you when you rise And would you return in glory Before the angels and the saints My heart will still be saved My soul will be the same Just go ahead and magnify Him in your praise. Make Him bigger than your problem. Make Him bigger than your imagination. Make Him bigger than anything.
We lift you up, Jesus Christ. There's nobody like you, Jesus. And today, Father, the enemy would try to make things bigger in our life. But Father, every time we shout, every time we just quietly worship, every time we get on bended knees, you become bigger in our spirit. We allow you to be bigger than the problem and the crisis. So Lord, together as a body of Christ, we say, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Lord, we give you the highest, the highest praise in Jesus' name. For those of you that are here for the first time and watching online for the very first time, we are a church that is very word-based and in the New Testament, they showed things when they were in the corporate setting like this that sometimes the Holy Spirit would want to say something special to the body. It's called prophecy. But when someone thought they would believe they received that, it would be tested by leaders within the body to make sure that it lines up with the word. And according to 1 Corinthians 14, 3, it says that that word must edify, exhort, and comfort. And ultimately, it should magnify and lift up Jesus Christ. So I want you to open your heart because we have a word that we have tested and we want you just to open your heart to what we believe the Holy Spirit would want to say to us corporately and individually. In the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel had a word for Israel about bringing God's people out of exile. God told me we should be praying this miracle for our families, our children, our grandchildren, and friends who are not living for him at this time. This gives us hope, anticipation, and faith. Oh Lord, may it be so. Ezekiel was told, when the people return to their homeland, they will remove every trace of their detestable things. And I will give them signalless heart and put a new spirit within them. I will take away their stony, stubborn hearts and give them a tender, responsive heart so they will obey my decrees and regulations. Then they will truly be my people and I will be my, I will be their God. For I am the Lord. If I say it, it will happen. Wow. 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 You know, I had no idea. We don't orchestrate these things. Uh, for those of you who are first time attenders here. And normally I would be in my series called So What? And this week, our, our next gen ministry, which is our youth, our young adults, they have been with Pastor Jeff Grinnell. And he's been, spending, it's been an amazing, amazing time. Uh, last night, Pastor Taylor and them, they imparted uh, spiritual wisdom and strength and encouragement into about 19 of the young men who want to step up their game spiritually. Last night he was speaking to about 70 folks yesterday, parents, and they're in just a parent brunch, and, and brunch to how do, we, how do we minister to your kids in the next generation. And I just felt so directed by my spirit, just invite Jeff to speak for this Sunday morning. Just, just in the middle of this series, just let him, let him speak. And he kind of gave me a heads up, not knowing that this word is directly in line what God wants to say to you as moms, dads, single individuals, that God is getting ready to change our hearts and he's getting ready to restore things we thought could never be restored. And believe me, it's a breakthrough. It's not just for this moment, everybody. It's bigger than just your family getting put together. It's bigger than your marriage just being put together. And remember that breakthrough means it can be a sudden advance. I know things take process, but I wouldn't be shocked if a God who could multiply fishes and loaves and turn a few loaves of bread and a few fish to feed thousands suddenly, that he could do a suddenly in your life today. 
as you put away the detestable things and say, God, I give my whole heart to you. How many believe he's here to minister today? Amen. Praise God. You, you can be seated. You can find your way back to your seats. How many just sense that the presence of the Holy Spirit is so dynamic in this place today? And as I stated earlier, Jeff Grinnell is here today. And I just, I want to tell you a little bit about Pastor Jeff. Jeff has been in youth leadership for over four decades. 40 years of nothing but concentrating in youth. And he founded an, uh, uh, an organization called Youthology that inspires and resources youth pastors across the nation and around the world. And uh, what's even interesting that some of you may not know this because a lot of time has passed, but Jeff was the youth pastor here in 1988 to I believe 1996 under Pastor Wayne Benson. He was here. And he's never left that call. He's never left that. It's always been a passion for him. In fact, his book is available called Sec, uh, Gen Sexy, and it really is a biblical perspective on love, sexuality, and youth that is, and sexy is the Generation X, Generation Y, and Generation Z because they're all their perspectives on sexuality and a biblical, a biblical response to that is, is, is different how they perceive it. And so he puts it in the language of those generations to empower you as parents, to empower you young men, young ladies, make an investment in yourself. And I believe the, uh, the book is uh, $15, which is very cost effective. And uh, we sold out already since he's been here. Uh, but I wanna encourage you that if you wanna get it, there's a QR code up here, just pop your phone up uh, to your camera, look at that and it'll take you right to it and you can order it right away. That's how quick things can happen nowadays. I can't tell you Amazon will have it at your front door when you get home, but you still can get it pretty quick, all right? But I'm just so grateful for someone that God's given a voice to, to speak to families, to speak to youth, to speak to each generation. And I really believe the Lord assigned Jeff to be here this morning, even in light of that word that we felt the Holy Spirit wanted to give us today. So I want you to thank the Lord for the gift of a pastor, teacher, and Jeff Grinnell. Would you welcome Jeff to the platform today? Amen, Jeff. God bless you, my brother. We love you. The Lord use you today, okay? Amen. Those of you are st who are standing and honoring me probably are just stunned I'm still alive. <laughs> I love this house. Do you love this place? Yeah. Sam wanted me to ask that to make sure he heard some claps and ap approval of that. If you would, go to Malachi chapter 4. It's the last chapter of the last book in the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 4. Barb, thank you for that word. You will see how critical that word is as this message develops. It's remarkable how the gifts are supernatural, aren't they? The, listen, you cannot remove supernatural from Christianity. If Christianity is anything, it is supernatural. And if you remove supernatural from Christianity, then we have a dead religion. Right? I'm, I'm about to come. If the youth keep shouting me down, I'm going to move this thing right over here and speak to you. So, come on. <laughs> Pull me over this way a little bit, okay? All right, all right, all right. And uh, one of the things that I have been humbled by over the years, I, I have this opportunity, I call it a blessing and a curse, to travel across this country in small, medium, and large settings, in urban and suburban and rural settings. And I see the church in all kinds of conditions. I see healthy churches and I see unhealthy churches. And one of the common denominators in an unhealthy church is a lack of the supernatural, a lack of the 
power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And, and, and I know here in this house and at home where you're at right now, you're going to hear a call this morning for the presence of the Holy Spirit on our, on our families and on the church. Because hear me, healthy families build healthy churches. It is not the other way. Healthy families build healthy churches who transform communities. And Malachi gives us a prophetic look into the end times. You know, as I travel, I hear this question on a regular basis. Is the Lord coming back? What, what do you see prophetically in our nation today? Do, do you see that, is it, are we living in the end of times? And I often respond, most often respond to that question and I say, well, I, I don't think so. And I know you, listen, we all have different opinions on that. I don't know necessarily what we mean by last days when we ask that question. But one of the things that must happen before the end of times is what we're going to read right here. And we don't see it happening in America in this moment. It is a precursor, I believe, to the return of the Lord. Look at Malachi's words in chapter 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. That's a look in verse 1 at the unbeliever in the end of times. And then he takes us to those who fear, to believers and Verse two, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in his wings and you shall go out and grow fat like stall fed calves and you shall trample the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this. A remarkable statement, iconic statement. Malachi's words are iconic. You've heard these before. Undoubtedly, you've heard what I'm going to read next. But he says, all of this is going to happen on the day that I do what? If you look at the rest of the book and you were to back up and read from 1 through chapter 3, you would see language like marriage and family and covenant and children and heritage and generation. You see these kind of words because Malachi, hear me, Malachi was one of the youngest prophets who lived. And Malachi's responsibility was to bring a prophetic word to Israel to prepare your homes for the end of times. It's a remarkable look. It's a remarkable challenge. And Malachi says, on the day that I do this, what? This family awakening, this family revival, this heritage, this passing off of the faith from your forefathers to their children and, their cho and, the, and the children to come and all those who call upon. It's a remarkable heritage. And this is, he gives us the answer. On the day that I do what? Verse 4. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in horror for all Israel with the statutes and the judgments. One of the great responsibilities of parenting, whether you are a mom or a dad or a guardian or an aunt or an uncle or a grandmother or a grandfather, one of our greatest responsibilities in this generation is passing off the faith to our children. God has not just called us to be their friend. God has not just called us to make sure that they have everything they need. God has not just called us to make sure that they respect our last name and take over the family business. God has called us to remember the commandments. Then he says, 
remember the word, and then he says, for behold, I will send you the prophets, Elijah specifically. I will send you the prophets before the coming of that great and terrible day. The end of times. I will send the prophet to you and he will turn the hearts of the fathers, parents. I, I will turn, he will turn the hearts of the parents to the children and he will turn the hearts of the children to their parents unless this curse comes. We blame government for the condition of society. We blame education for the condition of society. We blame social media for the condition of society. We blame movies and a progressive media culture for the condition of society. But hear me, it is not the government's fault. It is not education's fault. It is not social media's fault. Social media only revealed the problem. Hello. <laughs> the condition of America is the fault of our families. The Bible does not say, our Father which art in Washington. The Bible does not say, our Father which art in Los Angeles, or New York City, or Nashville, or Atlanta. The Bible does not say, our Father which art in the Silicon Valley, at dot coms. The, the Bible says, our Father which art in heaven. We need an awakening in America. We can put band-aids on broken bones. We can dress up pigs with dresses. And we can paint over rust. But you cannot deny the fact that we need an American revival and we need it now. And Malachi says, hear me, Malachi says, before all of this, I'm going to begin in the home. Don't show me your praise down here, sir, if you haven't praised at home. Ma'am, don't come and get involved in the intercessory prayer group here if you're not praying over your children there. Listen, I love you, and I won't be here next week, so that's okay. Pastor will be back, okay? But I have a responsibility to tell you the truth. And sometimes it hurts. We have a long way to go. Let me give you five simple points that I believe will bring an awakening to this nation. The first three I'm just going to give to you. I do not have the time to unpack these, but I want, really, I'm going to do that for the first four, and I'm just going to spend time on the last one. So let me just give these to you quickly, and you can write, because all of the note takers who are going to heaven need to hear these. <laughs> so go at home, just go to the drawer and get out, right, and put, number one, when we value moments, we create movements. We haven't seen a spiritual awakening in this nation since the Jesus movement. I know people will say, well, what about the Brownsville revival? What about the outpouring in Smithton? What about what happened here for, a, right? We remember those days. What about Toronto? Ble Listen, those were not nation-shaking movements. We haven't seen a nation-shaking spiritual moment since the Jesus Movement, 1967 to 1978. Time Magazine called the Jesus Movement the greatest moment in American spiritual history. Time Magazine, not us. And what has happened is we have lost the moment and we've, we've gone through the practices. Look at how you came today. Did you 
Prepare yourself. That Paul said when, when we come together, one brings a hymn, one brings a psalm, one brings a prophetic word. Listen, the gifts should be brought to the church, not necessarily distributed here. Because most of us would rather go to church than be the church. Let's just move on to point number two. We need a counter sexual revolution. Our children have lost their identity. Our children have lost their identity. God birthed princes and princesses in this building. And it is our responsibility as parents and leaders to turn them into kings and queens. And we've done a poor job of that. We've lost theology in the home. And we've raised our kids on culture and not scripture. We've raised our kids on, on feelings and not faith. We've raised our kids on emotions and not ethics. We've raised our kids on popularity and not principle. And we've lost the framework of the scriptures. Moses, listen, from the beginning of time, Malachi calls us back to Moses' words, remember, remember the scriptures. When is the last time that you read the scriptures at home? Not last Sunday, students, not Wednesday night, but when is the last time you got into the scriptures yourself? When is the last time you worshiped? And I don't mean last Wednesday or, or, or Thursday or, or last Sunday. Some of you haven't lifted your hands and worshiped Christ since last week when Drew led us. Not, not losing the moment, right? We need a counter sexual revolution because the tsunami that is called the sexual revolution has crashed on the shores of this nation and left in its wake a debris of damage. That's why we have to be called back to the scriptures and not culture. Listen, church, the ground is level at the cross. We have a different set of standards for those who are gossiping or lying or cursing or drunkenness or disunity than we do for those who are gay or struggling with their identity. People do not have to behave to belong. Paul said grace and truth. But the, the church has done a poor job on grace. Let me go to number three before I spend the next hour on that topic. the wisdom of the elders and the passion of the youth. We need an intergenerational honor in this place. I'll never forget sitting under Burt Evans. Right. Some of you know who I'm talking about. The man who carried the bags for Smith Wigglesworth. Some of you are thinking, Smith who? <laughs> Google him. Bert Evans was a minister on this staff here. He was a minister to the ministers. And I was on staff with him and I walked into his office one Tuesday and I said, would you mentor me for this next school year? And he said, well, yes, Jeff, I will. <laughs> Earlobes right here. Yes, Jeff, I will. I got saved in that office, right? Walked out and he said, next Tuesday at 6.30. And I was like, 
Wow, you're up at night still? I can do 6.30. I mean, I'll, right after dinner, I'll come on. He meant 6.30 a.m. God's not even up at 6.30 a.m. So, like the millennial that I was, I show up about 6.40, door closed, and I'm like, <laughs> beat him. Right? That's what I'm thinking. And I wait out, you know, how we used to have, they used to have these off, admin, off, then you go in to the holy, to his office. And I'm in, I'm there and waiting. And now it's like five, it's almost seven, seven a.m. And I hear the door open and I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> and I, I said, hey, I've been, you know, waiting for, he said, I know. I said 6.30. How many know I was early the next week? <laughs> this is what he said to me in the first meeting the next week. He didn't have time for me that, that morning because I didn't make time for him. And so he said to me, young people, he said, never go for the gold, never go for the glory, and never go for the girls. And I've preached that 10 times. <laughs> Materialism, pride, and the lustful, lustful sexual behavior. Listen, what one generation can pass off to the next is invaluable. Every awakening in this nation, bar none, hear me, every awakening in this nation, bar none, began with young people. From the first great awakening, 1740s, 1820, to the Second Great Awakening, late like 1790s and 1810 to 1870s, those two great awakenings, both begun by young people. The Azusa Street outpouring that began this church, that began this movement in Los Angeles, began in Topeka, Kansas, with about 30 college kids who couldn't get home at Christmas and just decided to have a prayer meeting because of a snowstorm. Moved that prayer meeting to Hot Springs, Arkansas, and then to LA, and it began an 11-year run called the Azusa Street Outpouring. And then we had the Jesus Movement begun on the beaches and the bars of Central California. I was born in San Francisco in about 1963, somewhere around there. And I remember going to the Cow Palace and watching as evangelist after missionary after pastor would preach to a packed Cow Palace. I've seen that movement, but hear me. Revivals and awakenings may have been begun by young people, but they are sustained by adults. It's called money. <laughs> okay, it's maturity, <laughs> leadership, resources, right? Let me, let me go to the fourth one, the Trinity in the life of the believer. The Holy Spirit, hear me, the Holy Spirit in the moment, number one, the Holy Spirit in the moment. Number two, the Holy Spirit in this sexual revolution to bring back identity. Number three, the Holy Spirit on every generation, passed down from every generation, from our elders to our youth. Number four, the Holy Spirit in the believer. The most important relationship that you have on this earth is not your bae or your bestie. The most important relationship that you have on this earth is not your brother or your sister. It is not your mom or your dad or your grandmother or your grandfather. Hear me. The most important relationship that you have on this earth is the Holy Spirit. From the beginning of time, he has been working. And Jesus said himself in John 14, John 15, John 16, Acts chapter 1. 
It is important that I go away because unless I go, he cannot come. But when he comes, he will lead you and guide you. And we've forgotten that while most of us, hear me respectfully, while most of us are focusing on a historical Jesus and this incredible story, we've forgotten about the power of the Holy Spirit in our day. Jesus now is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you know that? He is seated at the right hand of the Father interceding for you and me. Because in Acts chapter 1, he fulfilled the word of his ascension. And he was taken from this earth. And in that moment, he said, stay, tarry, wait for the promise I have told you about. The Holy Spirit. And in that moment, he ascended and he sat next to the Father. And he began to tell the stories. Can you see the Father center throne? Can you see the Holy Spirit on the left? And Jesus as he is seated and everyone standing around him as he tells story after story of what had just happened the last 33 years. And then he says, I'm finished. And the father looks at him and the Holy Spirit looks at Jesus the Holy, the, Jesus looks at the Holy Spirit and he says, tag, you're it. And the Holy Spirit steps into eternity. And he's been working for 2,000 years trying to build the church. Hear me, without our relationship. If you look at the global church, it is a spirit-filled church. If you look at the American church here in the West, it is all about attraction, accompaniment, setting. We, tr we thought revival would come if we took the pastor out of suits and put the pastor in jeans. How has that how has that helped America at all? We need a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. He is the author, the architect. He is the voice that is calling people to himself. Do you see what, I wish I could share the stories of icons coming to faith. Icons coming to faith because of the call and the pull of the Holy Spirit. Hear me, the reason why you are struggling with what you're struggling with is because you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. If you had a relationship with the Holy Spirit, he would guide you, he would lead you, he would bring conviction, he would bring repentance to the areas in your life that need to be dealt with. Let me, let me move quickly to this last area. The family is the greatest model of awakening. It starts at home. Maybe you are on your way here and the argument in the car, right? And upset because somebody was late, somebody got up late, somebody didn't eat their bagel, somebody didn't and cram in the car, and the light didn't change, and right, and everybody's like, I don't like you, and you get here, and what happens? It's this, it's this transformation. Dad floats out of the car. <laughs> Mom, right? Just majestic. The pageantry walk to the doors. <laughs> Kids going, 
Who are they? Just saying. Okay, that was the Baptist church. That wasn't you. Okay, that was down the road at the method. Okay, sorry. But God is God at these altars while you were worshiping him. And God is God in your home at your meal. I don't just want to see God move in the church. I want to see God move in the home. Because healthy homes build healthy churches who transform societies. Stop worrying about the government. Stop worrying about education. Stop worrying about social media. Stop worrying about all of this other stuff. And focus on the home. You don't know my kids. Hello? Listen, 38 years of this. I know your kids. I've seen them all. I raised three of my own, and I'm raising six grandkids. Yeah, started really young. I started really young. I've seen them all. Conversations weekly. And when a parent says to me, you don't know my kids, they won't talk. Well, part of that took place 10 years ago. That's why. But deep down inside, your child is begging you to walk into the room and sit on their bed and say, the journey of a, of, a, of a thousand miles begins with one step. And whatever I didn't do is changing, and I'm here, and you can't get rid of me. They may not listen in that moment. They'd be like, yeah, okay, right? But if they see it through tears, you could win your child again. Would you stand, please, all across this place? Would you stand? Hear me. We have to take our home. We have to win. We have to win our home. Sir, I, it, it, the business doesn't matter. They would rather be poor than popular. Ma'am, they don't care how often you go to the gym or what you look like. They just want to see you cry over them again. Guardian, it's not another program. Don't take them to another Y event. They just want to walk the Grand Haven Pier with you. They just want to be with you. Malachi gives us this pathetic look at the precursor to an awakening. And when I say pathetic, I mean it this way. We've misused that word, you know. It really means pathos. It really means feeling someone who is pathetic is feeling sympathetic I've been praying this week as I have the last year with this message that God would bring romance back into the home like the romance we have for the business and like the romance we have for our body, ourself, and like the romance we have for making sure our kids go to the right school and the romance that we have for this and that, that God would restore our romance for each other. Listen, this is gonna be really awkward. I think that's why the Holy Spirit asked me to do this a year ago. I've done this in churches of multiple thousands in the room, and I've done this with churches with under 100 in a, in a theater smelling popcorn. 
And I know we have guests in here that may feel this is, I'm just gonna watch and that's okay. And I know that we have young adults in here that may not have a family. But in the next two minutes, I want you to get into your family units right now. All over this, to the front, maybe parents, if you wanna run down right now and wave at a kid over there and say, come here. Will you get into your family units right now all across this place? Come on, just turn in your family. I know this is the awkward part of how we do this, right? Please move. This is, this is not a sanctuary with pews now. Would you move right now and find your family? Come on, let the buzz happen. Wave at your kid. Kids, just go move to your family right now because dad's stunned right now. Mom doesn't know what to do, okay? So just go find them. Come on, wave at them. Too many of you are looking at me going, what are we doing right now? You're getting into a circle. Don't, don't look at me anymore. Get into a circle all over this room, please. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get into a circle all over this room. You're still in lines. You're still in rows. Come on, turn, turn right now. Look at, look at her, sir. Look at her in the eyes right now. I don't care if you argued this morning. A journey of a thousand miles begins with one step right now, right? Come on, turn. I know this is so awkward and this is so difficult for you right now. Some of you don't even, you don't even want to look at each other. This is where the beginning of the healing starts. At home, would you do it right now? Would you just, right? I know you're at the table. Maybe you're on the couch. Maybe you're in a coffee shop. Uh, grab somebody next to you at the table and say, would you pray, whatever, right? Come on, circles, circle up, circle up, circle up, circle up. Here's what we're gonna do. In just a moment, I really believe that there's going to be an awakening that hits your home that is going to be felt and sensed in this place. Hear me. It's going to be felt and sensed in this place as healing happens as you look into each other's eyes. Did you hear me? Healing is going to happen in your home right now. One step, just a step. It may not solve it all, but one step. One step. I want to ask you, before we pray this song and before pastor comes, to pray four areas. Here's the first one. Would you look everybody in the circle, look them in the eye and say, I'm praying for my revival right now. Pray for yourself in that circle right now. Come on. God, revive me. God, revive me. Come on. God, revive me. Nobody's leading it, but everybody in the circle is praying, God, revive me. I cannot win this nation. Come on. I cannot win this nation unless I win myself. We don't need a national revival until we get a personal revival, a personal awakening. That's what you're praying right now. One more minute, one more minute. Come on, pray in that family unit. Pray in that family unit. God, revive me, revive me. I wanna lead this family. Maybe a child is praying for a mom and dad right now or a guardian right now. Revive me, revive me. Second, I want you to pray right now for your family. Listen, here's what I want you to do. I want somebody in that circle of your family to make sure that every person in that circle is born again. I'm gonna ask you, sir, ma'am, teenager, I'm gonna ask you right now to make sure everybody in the circle is born again. Will you do it? I want you to look at each other and say, do you know Christ? Come on, say it right now. I don't want you to assume. Would you say it to your spouse right now? Do you know Christ? Come on, I've watched this. I've watched brokenness in, in these circles as, as parents have given their heart to Christ. This is the biggest family I've seen all year, right here. This is the biggest family that I've seen. Wow. Make sure right now that every single person in that circle knows Christ. Come on, pray over your home now. If, if somebody said, I, I'm not sure if they put their head down and they couldn't answer it, would you right now say this prayer of salvation in your home. Where better to start the journey of faith than in your home and not just at an altar with a prayer partner? Amen? Where better to start this? Just say this, God, forgive me. Come on, say it out loud. God, forgive me. Take the old things away. Bring new things into my life. I believe in my heart that you are Lord. I confess with my mouth that you are risen from the dead. 
You just gave your heart to Christ. You just gave your heart to Christ in your home. There's a, there's a number on the screen. If you want to, you can, you can make sure that we get you materials, but the first order of responsibility is to come to your home, talk to the people in your home, and watch them build you up in your faith. I want you to pray for your neighbors right now. One of the things that my wife, many of you know Jane, passed away about six years ago. And she, her and I served here for many years. Thank you for so many of you who have, who have continued to pray for me. And listen, I'm healed and uh, I, we've, I've got a whole new life now, right? Those are, those are wonderful memories. One of the things that Jane did in our home, we have this pantry where there's all the snacks, right? Y'all got that pantry? In several homes where we lived, there was a sheet inside that pantry with all the names of our neighbors. All the names of their kids, their business, where the school they went to. And we told our kids, every time you get a snack, you have to pray for your neighbors. How many know our neighbors are getting a lot of intercession? <laughs> Hello? And my kids knew that when they opened that door, they were going to see the Smiths and the Estes family and the Williams family and the Rodriguez family. They were going to see that if I'm gonna grab a Twinkie or a Doritos, or if I'm gonna get some chip, I'm going to pray for my neighbors. Would you do that right now by name? Come on, pray for your neighbors right now. Let your children hear you pray for your neighbors right now. I'm just, I'm trying to help you model devotions in your home. Do you see it? Come on, right now, turn, pray for your neighbors, call them out. Call them out by name right now. God, we pray for the Williams family, their child that's astray. Come on, listen to the prayers across this room. This is revival. Come on, one minute of prayer for your neighbors. Say their name, say their name, say their name. Come on, last thing I want us to pray for before we, before we pray this song. Hear me, the last thing we're gonna pray for is our nation. Would you begin right now to pray for this nation? Pray, pray for our president. Listen to me, our president. Somebody hear me? Our president. I don't care whether you voted for him or not. It doesn't matter whether you're right or left or you're moderate. He is our president. And the only way we move forward together in unity is to pray for, you wanted to pray for the last president and the president before that and the president before that. So why not pray right now that God would move in this government right now? Come on, pray it. Pray it right now. Pray for senators and congressmen and women. Pray for mayors, for, for educators, for principals, superintendents of buildings. Come on, cover this nation right now. God, we've seen you do it before, and we want to see it again. I don't want to just hear about it. I don't want to just hear about it. I don't want to tell my kids about what happened. I want to show it to them. God, we want to see an awakening. I don't want to hear about an awakening. Stir the church. Will you pray that? Stir the church right now. Come on, pray for your friends. Maybe they're getting out of church. Maybe they're starting church two hours earlier, three hours earlier on the West Coast. Come on. One more minute. One more minute. Come on. God, stir this nation again. Come on. Come on. Believe this. Believe this. I see it. I don't want to just hear it. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see it.
our day, Lord. In our day, we'll see you do it again. We started this service out with breakthrough, and it meant even a sudden advancement. The Holy Spirit, and suddenly on the day of Pentecost. How many you believe a suddenly's happened in this room right now for families, for individuals, married folks, single folks, our young people, every generation? If you gave your life to Jesus Christ, whether you're watching online or in here, I want you to text us immediately. If you would, just text to uh, 616-531-2100, the word forgiven, because now we're going to help you walk that journey of overcoming in Jesus Christ. And you know, part of this, when Pastor Jeff was having us pray, is changing the generation, bringing it to people. Even when he's talking about praying those names of neighbors, in just a moment, we're going to have hero training over there. And I'm going to tell you, friends, we are going to see God use you in such an uncommon way to change people's lives. You're going to touch their felt need. And it's going to be such a simple training today. And in just a moment, I'm going to ask this of you. We're at the Life Center for the training. And I'm going to encourage you to go as quickly as you can over there. The food is going to be served and distributed very quickly because we want to get right to the training as quick as possible so we can expedite and honor your time, okay? So please go as quickly as you can over there. In fact, if you have a, if you say, Pastor, um, I have a little difficulty walking, just go straight out this door over here to Entry M. Just go straight through, and there's going to be a golf cart there that can shuttle people over there. And even when you leave back to your car, if you have a difficulty walking and you need that assistance, it's there for you. And I'm going to pray for that meal in just a moment so you can just go over there and you go right away eating, and then we can get right into getting started. How many of you believe, friends, that we're going to see the results of what God spoke to us today in our families, in our personal lives? We're going to see it. I have no doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. In fact, I want to encourage you today, because it's so simple to do, if you'd like to bless Jeff, I think the voice of what Youthology, the organization he started, I think if we've ever needed it now in churches, to this generation, it's right now. And we always want to bless those who have ministered to us. And I know we don't customarily have uh, the ushers with bags, but they're waiting at the door. If you want to give your tithe and offering and you want to drop it in there, I encourage you. Uh, bless Jeff. Just put it on the envelope where it says other. Just put Jeff and we'll know where it's going. You can go on your app and you'll see Youthology. That's Jeff's ministry called Youthology. Because I believe a message like this and a voice like this needs to be heard for a generation that's desperately crying out, someone please help me. How many thank God the body of Christ is going to give help through the name of Jesus? Amen. It's going to give help through the name of Jesus. No doubt in my mind. No doubt in my mind. So, Father, today, I want to thank you for every single person that is here today and watching online. Father, I want you to put your arms around them when they feel like maybe I failed as a parent or maybe I'm failing in my walk. Father, I love that line. You're not waiting for behavior before you start loving people and showing them their value. And Father, as they start to believe in you and give their life to you and they start growing in the Word, Holy Spirit, you're going to do a work like you did in me, you've done in Brenda, you've done in all of us. You start growing us into your image. But I pray they would feel the arms of the Father just around them saying, it's never over. It's never over. God, do a new thing in our lives and our hearts. I pray for that empowerment. Lord, I pray for the hero luncheon today, Father, that you would truly use us today as we get ready to be trained. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will take each individual as they say, yes, I can. And Lord, they're, people are going to see the image of Jesus through their love and just care, care for their life. They're going to be an expression of love. And Lord, I pray for the food over there that you bless it, Lord, and give us health and strength through it. I pray even, in fact, Lord, that some of us would find new friends over there today. And just, Lord, we'll rejoice and we'll celebrate over there as you get ready to take us, Lord, to another level of reaching people and empowering other churches to do it as well. Lord, I just pray for that. Bless us in that. 
And now, God, I speak over each one of them today as they go through their day. And I declare over you, brothers and sisters, the Lord blesses you and the Lord keeps you. His face shines on you and he is gracious to you. He lifts his countenance upon you and he gives you peace because you are his kids who he loves and he defends. And he is your good father in Jesus Christ's name. And everybody said amen. And let's go out with praise. Come on, amen. God bless you, everyone. I love you. We'll see you to Hero Training, or we'll see you next Sunday. Go with the joy of the Lord.